Are you thinking about taking part in a marathon or an ultra marathon? If so, today I'm going to be speaking to an athlete who has experienced both. She has a lot of wisdom, a lot of knowledge, and let's get into the video. Welcome back to my channel guys, Sinead here. Today I'm talking to athlete Jan, also known as Jantastic. Jan has a lot of experience in marathons and ultra marathons and she has also got a PB of broken the three hour barrier in marathon running. So she is a very, very good runner to get advice from. Um, so welcome to the channel Jan and thanks very much for wanting to do this interview today. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about yourself, um, say your first marathon, what got you into marathon running, your PB in marathons? Yeah, um, well I suppose my first marathon was back in 2015, which seems like ages ago now at this stage. Um, and I suppose when I went into it, I was completely oblivious to anything about marathons, just even the distance kind of, it was all very new to me. So going into it, it was, it was a beginner's experience. So I decided to just take it all in and I was with my friends so kind of just had a goal in mind but still not too hard on myself if I didn't get it mm -hmm. so we had kind of said we were going to try and do four hours and we were hoping that that was going to be the case and in the end we ended up doing 343 uh, so we succeeded on obviously what we were going to do so it was a, a brilliant experience um, from start to finish and I think it was because we didn't put too much pressure on ourselves and we just took it in and the crowds were amazing as well so and it was even nicer because Dublin was was my very first marathon and I suppose after I done that then the bug kind of hit me then that I seen that okay no I really enjoyed this and that I'd want to do another one again so and in the build up to your first marathon how much training did you do I trained for probably I'd say about five days in the week so that would have incorporated a speed session um, and especially a long run as well and we would have kind of um, done it as part of a group as well so there wasn't any sessions where I was doing them on my own uh, which was great so we kind of always made sure our long runs were all done together as part of um, the club that I was with in Mullingar and we just made them fun and yeah. um, so that the sessions seemed to kind of go a little bit quicker as well obviously the speed sessions a bit different you don't have too much fun uh, but the long runs were the fun days that we would have and we'd always have tea and coffee and stuff when we finished so we rewarded ourselves at the end and in the i suppose in the build-up like did you train for 12 months in advance or was it six months did you decide six months previous or 12 months previous what advice would you give to somebody as in whether to if they decide to take on a marathon in three months time or do you think is that too short a time frame no, I don't think it's too short of a, a frame time. I think it is definitely worth it not to think that you just get up tomorrow and you'll run a marathon because um, you shouldn't really do that. Some people do, but and mm -hmm. it could work for them and then it might not work for them as well. Um, but you just need to be very careful because you want to enjoy the experience. You don't want to be put off from it. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I had a 16-week um, training plan um, and that was something that the coach had given us. Um, so we worked through that week on week and that's kind of the plan that we did. Some people might like to do it a bit um, further back because they might um, be only starting out as well so they may never have ran before so they may start out and obviously trying to work their way up to a 5k first and then up to a 10k and so forth so everybody is really different but my advice would be is that um, possibly even to join a running club I think that at least if you join a running club then you've kind of got an experienced coach there that can tell you because there are obviously a lot of generic plans that are on the web that you can download as well but they're not actually specific for you so every runner is different and how they might um, react to a training session or um, for a long run or how they're actually doing something so it's definitely worth it to have somebody who has that experience behind them and um, to help you and um, doesn't matter whether it's going from complete beginner or for me now who's a bit more experienced I still have a coach that tells me what to do um, and that's what I go and do and he guides me then obviously then on how I'm coming back to him with communications on how a session felt so it kind of alternates in the training mm. So 
And like what you were saying there is you were saying that your first marathon you set yourself the time of four hours and you ended up doing the time in 3.43 which is absolutely amazing time to kind of cut that type down. Um, for me as well I think if a person is just starting out on their first marathon use it as just an opportunity to have fun and just use it to get to the finish line. I suppose like you yeah. my first marathon I set myself the goal of four hours as well and I was actually quite devastated when I came in in 4.01 one that's a different story um but i think as well that once your first marathon is done then you can start applying the pressure on yourself because no matter what time you do in your first marathon it's going to be a pb anyway exactly. so like if anybody's out there and they kind of feel that even four hours is too daunting for them that would be my advice as well just to try and actually even if you feel it's too daunting to set yourself a time to maybe just set out to finish it and because then you can start um, setting the benchmark then whatever time you get in your first marathon. Exactly yeah and like that's probably like we had that goal in our mind but like at the end of the day as you say it was a PB no matter what we did um, mm. it was obviously the icing on the cake that we did so well that we did but yeah 100% agree that it's about getting to that start line first as fit and as healthy as you can be and then obviously just enjoy the whole experience just take it in um, because it is an experience that will change your life and you might say at the end I'll never do it again I'll never do it again but promise me you will. So Jan would you like to tell the viewers why you run and what running does for you? Yeah uh, I suppose the main reason why I really started was when my grandfather was ill um, and that was why I kind of started so to me it was like it was my release um, for something for me um, because obviously when I was nursing him when he, he wasn't well um, that was a hard thing to, to deal with um, and I didn't really know how to cope with it because it wasn't something that I was used to to dealing with and I don't think anybody should be used to obviously having to nurse somebody that they love um, where you know they're going to pass away so for me it was my escape to just to get out to have five minutes ten minutes whatever it was that I decided that I was going to do um, I've always been a sporty person so it was just it was the first thing that I just decided to do put on a pair of runners and out, uh, out I went now I couldn't probably run from here to the pole at that mm. stage without having to stop but each day I would kind of give myself another goal yeah. to reach the next one and the next one so like I was starting from scratch um, just because I played sports doesn't mean that I can go out and I can run a marathon without training so mm. obviously Obviously, I had to start right at the beginning as well to run, walk, run, walk, run, walk, and then eventually it just kept going. Yeah. And how, how has running changed your life? Like, what exactly does running do for you? It's just, I think it's, it's the me time because I work in an office um, it's not what I love to do but it's something that obviously pays the bills so I just love getting outdoors I love just being on my own sometimes or with friends as well and I just feel that it has given me so much as in um, for my mental health that it's given me mm -hmm. but also that I've made so many great friends from it as well that I possibly wouldn't have had from before because obviously I stopped playing the soccer you kind of miss that kind of interaction with a lot of people Around you so plus I find with the running it gives me the opportunity that I can do it when I want it on my terms if I want to do two runs if I want to do three runs I can do it in the, that time so it gives me that flexibility to be able to, to do it when I want to do it. Mm -hmm. So if anybody is starting to start to run now or they want to do a marathon or an ultra marathon what do you feel is the most important pieces of equipment that they might need? Uh, well, first and foremost, I would definitely say a uh, pair of trainers would be your first point to call that 100%. Forget the watch, forget anything like that, that will all come afterwards. But my advice would be to go to a proper reputable running store and um, get a gain analysis done so that the runners that you pick are the right ones for you. Um, try not to look at the price tag. I know some people do, that that's what they look at straight away, the price tag, and they get turned off because something might be a bit more expensive. But it doesn't necessarily mean because it's cheaper that it's going to be better or that it's more expensive that it's going to be better as well so that would definitely be my bit of advice that I would have because um, I know when I personally bought my own pair of trainers um, I said to the guy that was doing the analysis on me don't show me the prices just put a row of them in front of me and I'll go by feel and mm -hmm. how I feel in them and then obviously he'll know um, from doing the gait analysis on me and I said to myself laughing saying no my luck I'll pick out the most expensive pair of trainers but 
I didn't. I actually picked mm-hmm. out the middle of the range. But I think if he had told me which was the more expensive, I probably would have went for those ones because I said if they're two hundred euros, then they're they must be better. Must be yeah. good. But it doesn't. Everybody's foot is different, so it's very very important that the shoe that you get is for you and that it's comfortable. Mm-hmm. Um, the next piece, I suppose, that would be very important as well for somebody would be socks. Mm-hmm because obviously you have to remember it's your feet that you're going to be running with as well um, and then work from the bottom up and um, that that's kind of just my advice on it as well that you just get the right proper shoes and socks yeah and I think say with some ultra runners who are embarking on an ultra run and who want to go out for a long run might get like a trail type of jacket um, yeah. well, with pockets and that that they can put stuff in and yeah. even car keys or whatever do you Things. use those type of jackets yeah, or if, not if I'm running say a really long distance and obviously I don't have anybody that's coming with me say on a bike I, um, I would I'd have um, I have a Columbia backpack that I can yeah. put on so it's very lightweight um, which is great and it's ideal for me for the types that I'm doing um, and it would have two po- breast pockets that I can put my drinks into mm. it have a pocket at the back as well which would be um, big enough to put like a rain jacket or a banana or something like that into it as well and, and like as you say keys and stuff and enough kind of pockets that the stuff is not bouncing around in as well so <laughs> it really depends on what it is that you're doing and um, I'd have different jackets for different types of weathers that I would wear and different tops as well that I'd, I'd wear as well for, for different things as well so it really depends on the distance if I'm training on the track it's great because I can just set it on the, the ground or on a table and take it as I go but if I'm out in the mountains or out on the roads as well for a long time it's definitely important to make sure you bring in a few. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell me what was your first 50k and tell me um, was your ultra training different from your marathon training if you just want to tell the viewers a small bit about your first 50k uh, what um, what training you did and what time you did etc. Yeah so my first ultra marathon was in Donaghy the national championships and that was in 2018 and so it was a little bit daunting for me because I I had always trained just up for marathons and never thought that I could run 50k Mm -hmm. and people kept saying oh you'll be fine you'll be fine but I knew as well from um, when I done my first half marathon that you have to respect the distance so you obviously need to put the training in then for that as well so yeah the training was definitely different to um, marathon training as in the distances were further so my long runs would have been a bit further than say what I would have done for marathon training um, so that that obviously and then obviously incorporating in um, my distance is the obviously the pacing that I was doing as well so the pacing was going to be different to what I was running for um, my marathon times as well so because the distance was a bit longer it was kind of paired back a little bit so it wasn't as fast I know people might think that sounds funny but if you can run a marathon in this time surely you should be running that for your 50 k but um no not now you shouldn't kind of obviously be doing it because it was my first um i just wanted to obviously to be able to enjoy it and i done a time of 350 in that in my very first one and i ended up coming second as well so which was a an added bonus on, on top of that for my very first ultra as well yeah. for your first ultra coming second female that's an absolute incredible achievement especially three years after starting your first marathon when you did your first marathon in 2015 and then doing your first ultra in 2018. So I suppose for myself there is many days where I'm not motivated to run and there's many days where I have that inner self-doubt and um, like even on the track here now today it's quite windy and breezy and as you were saying there a while ago it was raining quite heavily so on say your days when you go to a track session and the track session hasn't went like you expected it or on days where you're not motivated to run or there's an inner voice which is doubting your ability how do you deal with those days because I experienced them and I suppose many other people experience them so maybe if you'd just like to maybe tell our viewers or is every single day a positive day for you? No I wish every day was a positive day but um, no like everybody else I do have my up days and my down days as well so um, like for even just for example on Monday night here on the track uh, was my first night back after doing my um, six hour virtual race that I had done um, two weeks prior and my legs were just tight it was like they remembered they were back on the track and they were just like you've just ran six hours and they said now you want me to run for an hour and I was given a specific session and I started off great I started off fine and then 
then as I was starting to get into the second set of it, the legs just weren't playing ball. So obviously my legs were still tired from obviously what I had done before. Um, but I tried to push on then through it as well, um, to, just to keep going. And then in the end I started to feel just like a slight little twinge. So I decided then, no, I think it's best just to listen to the legs, listen to the body, they're tired. So just take a step back. And I was very, very frustrated at the end of the session. I was annoyed at myself because I know I can do it. Um, but I said, um, went home, gave out to myself for a while, um, had some dinner and then I was kind of like, had to sit back and think, well no, think of what you've already just done and then that's just one session and the next time I go out and I do it after I've rested then that I feel a bit better for it as well. So yeah, there are days that I do come out and I don't even want to run, especially like if it was raining and stuff like that, but um, if I want to get to where I want to go to. I have to put in the, the training. So you're thinking else. bigger picture? Bigger picture as well. Yeah, I like, don't get me wrong, there are sessions when I'm running and I'm not really enjoying them at all. Um, but I just have to just keep thinking the bigger picture. And if I'm going to improve that, um, the only way I'm going to improve is I'm going to have to run because the people I'm going to be competing against are going to be training in the exact same weather that I'm training in as well. Mm. Um, whether it's raining, whether it's cold, windy. Um, unfortunately, we live in Ireland, so that's nearly every day. Well, yeah. We get three seasons in one day. so. Um, no, I, I do. Like I do. I'm like everybody else. I do get those days, um, but it's definitely about trying to think of the bigger picture, and um, they're trying to get over that. And I'm thinking as well of the people who possibly can't get out. Mm. That I am lucky that I can get to run. Um, I don't have to, but I get to. So that's why I kind of. Uh, so you I practice gratitude, and you also. Um, I suppose it comes down to mindset and yeah. kind of you see the day that it is and then the next day then you approach it yeah. differently and I suppose uh, a run a day can change your day but running consistently every single day can change your life. Exactly, so. exactly that. So at the end of August of this year, uh, 2020, Jan completed her first six hour virtual race and um, would you like to tell our viewers a little bit about that, your thoughts going into it, how you got on, uh, any fueling you used or what mental preparation you did and because I think when people hear six hours running for six hours that <laughs> sounds really daunting so, so covering a distance of 73.7 in a six hour race on the track that's an incredible achievement can you tell me was there high moments or low moments during it and if you if there was would you like to give an example of each yeah, well, I actually had a lot more good moments and I didn't, I don't actually even recall that I had any bad moments. The only part was when I'd kind of stop when I was coming around to say, take on a drink. My legs would be stiff and I'd be starting, I'd be like, oh, why am I stopping all the time? It's it's making my legs stiff. I need to just keep going. And um, so there wasn't any time through the race that I felt I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. I knew I was going to do it and I just kept saying, no, just keep going, keep going. Um, now that doesn't happen in every race. So it kind of, to me, it felt very like the Dublin race um, when I got the time of 2.52, where I just kept saying to myself, you can do it, you can do it. Um, now, as I say, that doesn't happen in all races. I have gone out in some of the races and said, you can do it, you can do it. And then they don't go my way as well. Um, but I just kind of, all that week, I just kept saying, no, you can do it, you're after earning your right to, to put on the Ireland jersey. Maybe it was the Ireland jersey that was on me that was giving me the inspiration. The, the inspiration. Yeah, yeah, to just do you keep think, going. Ha, yeah, do you think having your family here to support you that day, was that um, yeah. uh, 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 contributing to the high moments or like when you'd come around and seeing them there? Was that Yeah, helpful? I definitely think that helped and it was the support and then the support of my club mates as well. Um, I really think that that helped. I think now if you would have said to me to run for six hours on the track on my own I'd have I probably would have given up now I have mm. to say but the fact that I had people there that were of that same mindset as me that mm. um, kind of knew what it was that I was trying to achieve and were proud that I was doing it as well and were proud to be running with me as well mm. as well as I was proud to be running with them so and then my other two club mates who were also doing the six hours as well having them there helped and one of them um, Stephen who's very very experienced he's a very positive guy as well he kept on saying and um, giving positive kind of quotes to us all the time as well to keep us going as well so we were talking to each other as well so I think that that helped as well so even though we knew we were running for the six hours um, 
we weren't kind of very, um, oh, we're not going to talk to each other, we're just very focused on what we're going to do. We kind of tried to make it as fun as we could, mm -hmm. um, as, well, as well as running for six hours can be fun. But um, I definitely think that that helped. And then, yeah, as you say, having family there as well. And, and did support. you listen to music? Did you use that as a tool during it or not? No, I tend to not listen to music. Um, that's just my own personal experience that I don't listen to music um, because I don't want to get into the habit of it because most races it's banned that you can't have headphones in as mm. well so to obviously to be able to listen to instruction um, then just listen to the people around you like if you're at a race and you've got the headphones on and people are cheering you, you may not know them but it's an amazing feeling hearing people shouting um, mm. so I like that um, kind of feeling the aspect I think that would that pumps me up more than actually having some some music in um, so no I, I hadn't got anything for that yeah so the night before some just quick uh, uh, questions uh, the night before what time did you go to bed I went to bed at 10 and I tossed and turned. <laughs> and what time did you get up that morning? I got what time were you starting running that day? We were starting at 8, yeah. um, so I was up at about a quarter to 6 um, so that I could give myself a chance to, to get in a good have breakfast. Have your breakfast and have that digested. Yeah, get the, have that digested. That I made sure the night before I had all my kit was all prepped. Um, I had all my bottles labelled. I knew what it was in my bottles, mixed between tailwind and obviously water as well. Um, mm. That I just made sure that I everything and then I had a list I wrote everything down on a list so and I had them all ticked off then I had another list for the next morning to re-tick them all then just mm. to make sure so I had a just in case for a just in case because with the Irish weather you just don't know as well mm. uh, what way it's going to to go so I made sure that I had everything with me and um, so I always I'd rather have it with me than be looking for it so and I made sure then that the table was set up and that we got up to the track early enough then that we could get a warm up and that we'd everything set up and that people that we had crewing for us as well knew what to give me at certain times as well and um, so it, that was kind of good so it's making sure that and giving myself plenty of time so I'm not I wasn't panicking so it felt very relaxed kind and of we're in up. a we're in a day and an age now where everybody's talking about shoes 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 what shoes are you wearing and technology and shoes so what shoes did you wear during the six hours? I wore the Nike Vaporflies um, okay. and the reason why I wore those um, is I find that um, I recover very well um, from wearing them, the support that's in them. I know they get a lot of bad press saying that people shouldn't be wearing them um, but for me personally I find that they're a very comfortable runner um, and that I didn't have any issues. I've never so had an issue wearing them. So that's the Vaporfly Next Percent. Next yeah. Percent, And yeah. then you also have the Alpha Fly as well, don't yeah. you? Yeah, so uh, just to the view, uh, viewers there, what would you feel is the difference between the Vaporfly and Alpha Fly and why didn't you maybe say wear the Alpha Fly on the day of the six hour rather than the Vaporfly? I had um, actually both of them with me um, and I said I'd bring the two just in case I I happened to have a mishap with one of them um, but I didn't I'd ran in the vapor flies probably more than I had the alpha flies because the alpha flies were only new as well um, and I'd done a couple of runs in them now I had no issues with them um, but I did just think on preference on the day that that was what I chose and mm. um, that was what felt comfortable um, as much as the alpha flies do um, I feel very very comfortable I've never had issues with them um, but I suppose just on the day it was my gut instinct was to wear them so that was what I went with and what was comfortable for me then on that day. And in general, do you find the Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly are they good in, say, if it torrential rain? Are they good in that type of weather or not? Do you find? Yeah, no, I've ran in uh, obviously Ireland again that we, we have a lot of rain um, and I've ran in all weathers in them and I've never had an issue in them. I even actually ran in the Alpha Flies um, for, or the, sorry, the Vapor Flies for the 50k, which is on a kind of a mixed terrain as well. And what was the grip like uh, that? It was great. I was actually quite worried at, at first, so I had done a couple of course reccees um, so that I could test to see would they, the grip on obviously turning bends, would they be fine on 
on it and I didn't have any issue in them. Um, would I wear them in the mountains? Probably not. Uh, mm. There wouldn't be a shoe I'd wear up there but um, most definitely um, there would definitely be a shoe that I'd go for if I was in the next race. I'd actually kind of feel a bit left out if I didn't have a pair of them because yeah. when you turn up to races everybody, everybody is wearing, wearing them. them. So yeah. you know if you want to be able to compete with the best as well like you know you're not going to rock up and uh, a unknown brand that hasn't been tested and mm. isn't come but everybody is different so some people don't like them and then some people wear the Sockney ones or the Hoka's as well um, I haven't had an opportunity to try both of those yet um, which I will um, I'm not kind of just only into Nikes mm. um, I just obviously uh, they're also expensive so <laughs> it's yeah. trying to afford trial to be able error, trial yeah. and error as well so but hopefully the next ones I can try will be the, the new Hoka car um, carbon ones as well and, yeah. and see how they react yeah I think everybody has to do whatever running shoe suits you best mm -hmm. like even with me there now I like Hoka is a great brand and Altra and these different running shoes they're great and they're meant to be very good for ultra running but I've tried to run in them and I've ended up getting blisters now disclaimer there I always get blisters no matter what running shoe I wear so um but I would love to be able to run in something like Hakka or Altra because uh, apparently they're good for the ultra running. But mm -hmm. um, again, it just comes down to trial and error. So for what suits me might not suit another person. So mm -hmm. again, this is where your training all comes in. If you're preparing for your first marathon or your first ultra, you're figuring out what um, fueling you do, what training kit to wear, um, whether you want to train by a watch or heart rate. We haven't even talked about that. Do you train by heart rate or? I actually don't, I train by power. Um, okay, so, so when you say po power, what do you mean? Um, so this is something that's new for me as well. Uh, this, my coach now has got me training on power. So it kind of makes you not look at um, your pace because for your pace, is it can depend on the terrain. It can depend on obviously uh, the wind, the weather, Or if you're anything, going uphill or uphill downhill. And stuff, where power should be consistent. So at least then if you're um, running on your power, um, which is in most watches now, like so when you look at your watch what would your watch be saying like would it be saying five percent power because i don't really know about yeah so power. normally kind of in around the, the 350 mark um would be your 350 watts is what's kind of the standard what i'd be, be doing but it really depends on obviously what what I, what type of session it is that i'm doing obviously it can be higher or lower for that so yeah. to try and just keep that consistent it's a new approach for me to try it that way but it is actually quite nice as well to train other than something that's like your heart rate or your your pace because it, it comes down to the terrain as well. Do you like wherever. heart rate training or which would you prefer if you weren't doing this power? Would you prefer heart rate or would you prefer pace? I prefer pace because I find um, the heart rate it can be very all over the place uh, with um, obviously if you're using your wrist um, watch to, to do it for that way. I find with my watch at the moment, the wrist, the heart rate on that is completely incorrect. And mm. if I was to go by that, I wouldn't be running ever. And um, so I kind of would use a heart rate strap for that to keep it a bit more consistent. So Jan, you were talking there about the chest strap and yeah. you were saying, we were saying there that about getting chafing. So do you experience chafing from this strap in the warm weather or? Yeah, I've had a couple of experiences with it. The six hour race, I did get it again um, as well. So, and normally it's kind of just obviously just where the your bra line kind of yeah. is, is for obviously for, for women. And um, I normally get it there, but for the first time actually, I got it on my back this time. So, okay. um, which isn't great obviously to get it. It's a pity that we have to wear a chest strap because if the watches are built with a, a wrist based kind of approach to be able to take in your heart rate um, you should be able to rely mm -hmm. on it um, but unfortunately um, you, I can't rely on it for mine because I have a very very low heart rate as well so I kind of know myself if it's uh, reacting and it's not doing the way it's meant to be doing because I've done, gone and gotten VO2 testing done so I kind of know what all my levels should be at. Um, so it can be very hit and miss. So I tend to kind of just then run on pace then. That would be kind of the way I would do it then if I wasn't to do it that way.
and I have a heart rate training video on my YouTube channel so check that out as well and I suppose it's important to say there while we're talking about heart rate that the most accurate way to get your heart rate zones is to go and get a fitness test um, done in a science lab like Jan was saying with getting VO2 testing done. Yeah. Yeah. Jan, which do you prefer, Martins or Ultras? And why? Oh, it depends, I suppose. The only really proper Martins I've done is Dublin, um, and I like that. I would like to try some flatter ones as well, which would be nice. Um, it's very hard to pick between the two. I like. But Both either way, you like long distance I, stuff. Yeah, it seems to agree with me, yeah, the long yeah. distance. If you were to ask me to run a 5K now or a marathon, I think I'd run a marathon quicker yeah. than a 5K. I think the reason why I would like, I like those types of distances, it gives you a chance to, to get into your rhythm yeah. and to, to find your pace rather than the 5 or the 10Ks. Is they're, they're flat out. So yeah. <laughs> if I don't like 5Ks or 10Ks. Like normally with me running a marathon, I'm only warmed up by say mile 19 or mile 20. <laughs> I think that's why maybe ultras even suit me because yeah. even by the end of the marathon, I'm only just starting to get warmed to get up by then. You absolutely seem to love running. Is there anything about running that you don't like? The bad weather. Mm. <laughs> I don't like the bad weather for it. No, I do. I love it. Um, I just feel so grateful that I can do it. Um, mm. So that's kind of, and it's given me so much as well, like as I said earlier on. So I feel that it just, yeah, just keep doing what's making you happy. And, and running makes me very, very happy. So um, as long as my legs will allow it, um, I'll still keep going. Running requires a lot of patience, I suppose, in seeing different progression. Um, it may feel that people are out there and they're trying their best, they're trying their best, and their times are only coming down maybe by one second or three seconds after training for maybe five months. What mm. advice would you give about patience? Uh, just to definitely, definitely be patient. Don't rush it because I feel that if you go and you rush into something um, like that, you you lose the fun for it, and then you'll start to get injured. Um, you just don't want to go out and you don't want to do it anymore. So it is you just have to be patient and be consistent as well. So if something isn't happening, maybe you just might need to change something. Um, you might, it could be change something in your mindset and um, change the type of training that it is that you're doing, or even the location. Exactly, or... and that's what I do. I change where I run. I try and not run in the same place to prevent boredom. Yeah, yeah. all the time time um, because that can get a bit monotonous and if you're training on your own maybe maybe join a, a running club if you're not part of a running club or get somebody to come out with you or um, like I'd have people sometimes come with me on a bike mm. if they if they're not able to, to keep up with me depending on what what it is that I'm doing and if I've no um, nobody to come with me I'd say jump on a bike and then they'd come with me that way um, but yeah definitely just to be and um, persevere at it it will happen like look at what I've achieved um, and that definitely did involve patience. It's not going to happen overnight. And it doesn't matter if it's only a one second PB. A one second PB is a lot. Yeah. So people think, oh, why? Uh, like what the times when I was getting like 301, they were like, but it's only a minute. Why couldn't you get the minute? And I was like, do you realize how hard it is yeah. to get that minute? Mm. So unless you're actually doing it. Um, but just don't be hard on yourself. I'm one that's very, very hard on myself. Um, so that is one bit of advice that I would say to people is, don't be hard on yourself um, that you need to obviously just um, surround yourself with the right people and um, it will come so i suppose inspiration can be found anywhere and we all have our own role models who in running uh, inspires you uh, i suppose it'd be my club mates they'd be because they're so supportive as well um, and then obviously my coach as well because he obviously believes in what it is that I'm doing as well and then obviously family as well they would be um, a huge inspiration to me as well because they put up with obviously all my, my running all your running talk all my running talk and everything like that or the next run that I'm going as well and um, then it's the other athletes that I compete against like the likes of Laura O'Driscoll and Aoife Mundell and, and 
and then even Sinead Diver now as well like just seeing people like that and seeing what they're achieving and Aoife Cook now please God if she get for the Olympics as well so it's just people like that is an inspiration to show that it can be done mm -hmm. um, and just that you just keep chipping away at it and that hopefully that I can be up at the start line with the likes of, of those of those people as well. And what are your goals for the future? Um, to officially and um, to wear the Ireland jersey um, at the neck when the 100k um, actually does please God go ahead um, next year um, to get a much faster um, marathon time and um, so I'm looking to obviously bring that time down to um, so she's looking to bring down her marathon time from 252 two. which is already <laughs> uh, a huge achievement in yeah. itself already um, and then I'm also looking then to bring my 50k time down as well so um, it's just uh, I suppose my goals are to get faster mm -hmm. and to obviously to stay as, as healthy as I can be as well. Uh, thanks so much Jan for meeting up with me here today on the track. If anybody else wants to learn more about you or ask you any questions that I haven't asked you or just even connect with you on social media, how can they do it? Yeah, the, um, they can follow me on Instagram. That's probably where I'm most um, active is on Instagram. So that is at, at Jantastic2. Or you can follow the um, hashtag at um, Jantastic Journey as well, uh, because that's where I'm documenting all my kind of training and up to the, these big races and what it is that I'm doing as well. So, and thanks so much, Sinead, for having me as well. Okay, well, I think that since we're here at the track, we can't get away without doing a small bit of training. So we might go off and do a small run. We're not yeah. going to do in six hours, mind <laughs> you, because um, uh, we might just barely get around for 400 meters. But um, yeah, and as you're getting quicker, I'll probably uh, be trying to catch up with you. So that's my goal for the future, to try and catch up with Jan. Thanks, Thanks. Nate. Thanks. video give it a thumbs up and if you want to hear more of similar content then subscribe to the channel and until next time everybody stay safe stay happy and keep running